Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry we got cut off. Let's pick up where we left off. And that's with Mendel's third law, which is called the law of segregation. And this law states that during gamete formation, so during meiosis, the alleles for each gene separate randomly from each other um, so that each gamete only carries one allele. So that basically says that during meiosis, after interphase, when your homologous pairs um, are made and form, they will separate during meiosis so that you only get one parent's homologous chromosome in one cell and the other in, in the other cell that's formed. And then after the second mitotic division, you will end up with four cells, each that have one chromosome in them. And because they each have one chromosome in them, they're only going to contain the one allele for that gene that we're looking at in each cell. And his last rule is called the law of independent assortment. And this says that different traits are going to separate independently from each other. So we have 46 chromosomes total in each of our cells. And the 23 pairs of chromosomes are going to have all the different genes for all the different traits that make us look like us. And when I have a gene for hair color on chromosome, on, on this big chromosome here, let's say that's chromosome number one, and there's going to be a gene for, for height found on chromosome number two, the little one, the way that they line up during mitosis, during meiosis, and the way that they separate out is going to be different from each other. For example, you can see that just because the this um, big chromosome gave the brown allele doesn't mean that you're always going to get the brown allele for the recessive, or sorry, for the smaller one. And over here, see, you still have the big chromosome being brown, but you have the little one being red. That's because um, it doesn't, there's no way of there being a connection from the way that the big chromosome divides during meiosis and the little one divides. You'll see more in detail how this works tomorrow when we learn about dihybrid crosses. So just kind of hold on to that law in the back of your mind. Because now we're going to figure out how to predict the outcome of traits in offspring based upon parent traits. And the way that we do this is through the use of a tool known as a Punnett square. And Punnett squares are all about predicting. Okay, They're going to predict the possible genetic outcomes every time two gametes combine. So one thing you're going to notice about Punnett squares is that there's going to be letters on the outside of the Punnett square as well as letters on the inside of the Punnett square. The letters on the outside of the Punnett square are going to represent the, the homologous chromosomes from one parent, aka the two alleles that they can pass on to their offspring. If this parent on the side is the mom, the mom inherited one gene from her mom and one gene from her dad, okay, and if you are her offspring, she's going to only give you either the allele she inherited from her mom or the allele she inherited from her dad. And the same thing can then be said about the, the parent, the male parent in this situation. He inherited one allele from his mother and one from his father, and so he will only pass on one of those alleles to his offspring. So the inside of the Punnett square represents all possible um, combinations of alleles based upon what the parent's traits are. So there are several steps that if you follow them exactly the way that I say, you will be able to solve every Punnett square correctly every single time. Okay, so here, here are the steps. Step number one is to assign a letter to each allele. Based off of the trait that you are looking at, you will assign a letter. The letter has to be specific for that trait. 
So if we are looking for plant height, you should be using the letter H. If we are talking about um, the purple colors of a, of a flower, then you will use the letter P, okay? And the alleles are either capitalized P's or capitalized uh, T's, right? Or did I say H's for height or lowercase? You're using the same letter, capital and lower cases, one for the dominant allele, one for the recessive allele. You will then use that information to determine the parent's genotypes. And once you've determined the genotypes, you will make the parent cross. Okay, we'll see in just a second what that looks like. After you've figured out the parent genotypes and the parent cross, you will then set up your Punnett square. Whichever parent's genotype came first, their alleles will go along the top of the box. Whichever parent's alleles you put second, they will go down the side, the left side of the box. Okay. Step four, you will then cross your Punnett square, which means that all letters on the top come down into the boxes and all letters on the left hand side are going to move over to the right. Whenever you are crossing, you must make sure that dominant alleles always come first. If you ever write recessive alleles first, that genotype is incorrect. So make sure that you are paying attention and always putting dominant alleles first. I cannot emphasize that enough. The last thing you will do after you've solved your Punnett square, you will then answer the question. And the question usually has to do about determining genotypic and phenotypic ratios. Or there would be some other question in there, but you should be able to reflect back on the Punnett square to do that. Okay, so keeping this in mind, let's solve our first problem. Okay, problem number one says that tall plant height is dominant over short plant height. The first thing you have to do, if you look back at step number one, is to figure out the alleles for the trait. Okay, since the problem says tall is dominant, a tall phenotype is going to be represented with a capital T. Short is recessive, so I will use a recessive allele, T, so a lowercase t. Okay, step one parent or the alleles done step two now it tells me to cross two heterozygous individuals and if you recall heterozygous means having two different alleles in your genotype so that would mean my first parents genotype would be capital T lowercase t heterozygous and the problem said the second parent was also heterozygous so there's their genotype that's my my parent cross. All you do is you put the first parent's alleles, put a little X in the middle, like they're multiplying, they're crossing, and then the second parent's genotype next to it. That's your parent cross. Step number three says to take the first parent's genotype and you put their alleles across the top of your Punnett square like this. One letter over each box. Second parent's alleles go down the side, one letter per box. Now that I set up the outside of my Punnett square, I will then cross, and I always start in the top left box. You bring the one parent's allele over and the other ones down, keeping them together to form a genotype. You move on to your next box, the one in the top right. Bring the dominant allele over, because remember that one stays first, then you bring the recessive allele down from the top. Okay, so we move down to the bottom left box. You bring the capital T down and the recessive T over. So you get another heterozygous genotype. And then lastly, again, bring the lowercase down and the lowercase over. Doesn't matter which one goes first because they're both the same. So now you've completed your Punnett square. You go on to answer the question, which the first question asks, what's the genotypic ratio? To figure out genotypic ratio, you have to look back at your Punnett square. And you start with the first box, 
and you look and see what the genotype is, and you write it down. So you would write down the homozygous dominant, capital T, capital T, and you count up the number of boxes that's found in. Capital T, capital T, or homozygous dominant is only found in one box, so it would be capital T, capital T, 25%. You'd move on to the next genotype, and you'd write that down and count up how many boxes it's in, and it's in two boxes, so that would be 50%. And then you go to the last genotype, you write that down, and it's only in one box, so it's 25%. Now I know that you are used to writing genotypes, or sorry, you're used to writing ratios as um, one letter colon another, you know, the two dots then another. You don't have to do that for this. Percents are perfectly fine. Anytime you see the word ratio, do it as a percent, okay? So that's genotypic ratios. The last step is to interpret the genotype into a phenotype. And so you, that's where you have to have already established what these alleles mean, and that will tell you what the phenotypes are. So when I look back at my problem and I establish that a capital T is tall, if I see a capital T even one or two in one genotype, that means that plant will be tall. So 25% tall. I move on to my next genotype. Oh. I see another capital T, so 25 plus 50 equals 75% tall. And since I have no capital T or dominant allele here, it's all recessive. That means that a recessive allele is short. So I will have, every time these plant parents reproduce, there is a 75% chance their offspring will be tall and a 25% chance they will be short. Whenever you see a Punnett square asking you to solve the inheritance, inheritance of one trait, you are conducting a monohybrid cross. We are going to be learning about a bunch of different inheritance problems, so it's important for you to know the, the names for those problems. And the problem that we just conducted with the tall and plant, uh, the tall plant and the short plant, you just completed a monohybrid cross. So check yourself. You want to cross um, two of the F1 offspring. Oh, I went, uh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. 